Sophie Hardy in the Internet Implant by Emma Dale, narrated by Leona Hall. Chapter 4 Infinite Possibilities. The children of today are the greatest assets on this planet. They are the fortunate generation, for they have not had to grow up facing the threats that we adults did, and for too long they have been ignored by too many people. I intend to change all that with the grand unveiling of this. King took a remote control out of his pocket and pressed a button. From behind the curtain came a child-sized dummy on wheels. On top of its head was what looked like a spider's web. It covered the part of the dummy's head that would have had hair and had bright flashing lights on the ends. This, King continued, is the kid's internet implant. It will be used by children as their passage onto the immersive internet. Now, I know it doesn't look like much at the moment. King walked behind the dummy and put his hands on its shoulders. But this is just a prototype designed to implant the implant. The actual chip for the child's head is this. King took a small round white ball out of his pocket and held it up. The majority of the crowd squinted to try and see what he was holding, but only a few could actually make it out. Once implanted, the implant will shrink down to a microscopic size and will not be visible to the naked eye. However, should the child wish to take it out, they can do, and while it is being removed, it will grow back to the size you see before you so that it doesn't get lost. The children in the crowd all looked at each other in disbelief. It was happening. Sophie continued glancing at Miss Sissons, who was again looking around herself and looking rather worried. She tried to catch her eye but couldn't. There will, of course, be limitations in what children can access, but... On the whole, they too will be able to communicate with anyone else on the planet in a matter of nanoseconds or browse for any fact or piece of information they desire, dependent on their parents' permission. We can't just let children loose online with all the dangers the internet presents. Mr Houghton could be seen nodding vigorously at this. He was a strong supporter of internet safety, as any head teacher should be. They will, they be able to watch any film, read any story or visit any place their heart desires all without leaving the comfort of their own settee or bedroom. King continued with the children of Pinkleton Primary in a complete trance. Hypnotised by what he was saying, all around the world as well, children were glued to their devices, excited at the fact that they were going to be given the same opportunity as the adults. It has been a long process, but, after all those months of research and development, I am very pleased to announce that we will be implanting the first five lucky children with their own implant here today at Pinkleton Primary School. At this, the pen of children erupted. Cheers, whoops and screams dominated the air. Film crews were clapping as they tried to imagine what it would be like to be the first parent of the first child implanted. Parents standing on ladders leaning against the fence round the field were shouting their children's name in an effort to get them picked. King again raised his hand and lowered it. Quiet descended and the children started biting their crossed fingers in anticipation. King clicked his fingers and Mr Houghton wheeled out the large red chair that was normally kept in his office. King continued to explain, even more relaxed than he had been. I don't want anyone to worry. This will be a completely painless experience and the recipient will walk away today with access to a universe-sized library of information. One child, who Sophie guessed must have been in about year five, screamed, Pick me! King finally smiled the tiniest smile you could ever see as he could sense the excitement on the field even if he wasn't caught up in it. Now, first of all, I would like to invite up... The children gasped as King paused for what felt like an age. Yasmin Aritti from Year 6. Sophie and Katie turned to look at their friend. Yasmin was simply staring forward while hundreds of eyes of the younger children turned to stare at her. It took a split second for the clapping and cheering to start, but when they did, the whistles and the cheering almost deafened Sophie, Yasmin and Katie, who were still gawping open-mouthed. Yasmin was to be the first of the chosen ones. Eventually, Sophie put her hand on Yasmin's shoulder and whispered, Go on then, with an air of frightened excitement. Dazed, Yasmin raised herself slowly and began to walk towards the end of the line of benches and onwards to the stage. Within a matter of seconds, Yasmin had gone from an unknown ten-year-old at school at the first day of year six to having her name broadcast to anyone on the planet that was watching this world-changing event. Her name would trend on social media. People would love her, people would be jealous of her and people would hate her, but none of that entered Yasmin's mind as she began to ascend the steps to the stage. If you could simply sit yourself here, Miss Aritti, King gestured towards the chair from Mr Houghton's office. 
oblivious. Yasmin just stared forward at the crowd and didn't do or say anything. Eventually, Mr Houghton put his hand on her shoulder, led her to the chair and sat Yasmin down on it. She held on to the arms tightly and continued staring straight ahead. A smile was beginning to creep across her face as the enormity of what was about to happen began to sink in. Cameras flashed and all over the world people were watching the first child ever to be given access. OK, Yasmin, I'm simply going to place this device on your head. There will be a quick jolt, like a pinprick, in the left side of your head and you'll be good to go straight away, King explained reassuringly. Yasmin finally turned her gaze from the crowd, looked at King and nodded. When you're finished, if you could stand over there next to your head teacher. Mr Houghton waved as if to say, yes, I'm still here, don't forget me. It may be slightly overwhelming at first, but all you need to do is look at the crowd normally and then you should be back and in control. It will take some getting used to, but I cannot stress enough that it is perfectly safe. Yasmin nodded again. No one had ever seen Yasmin speechless. She always had something to say and normally said it quite loudly. This was quite a novelty for everyone. Are you ready, miss? King asked. At the back of the crowd, Yasmin could see her mum and dad watching on proudly. Well, her dad was clearly zoned out on his implant, talking to a business colleague about some deal, but finally he zoned back in after receiving a jab from Yasmin's mum and his gaze returned to his daughter. He gave her a thumbs up from behind the pen and Yasmin smiled a huge smile. She was ready. Sophie watched as King placed the cap on Yasmin's head. The lights began to light up and King pressed another button on his remote. The lights on the headset flicked between green and blue for about five seconds. Yasmin then jolted slightly to her right as what must have been the pinprick sensation went through her head. Five seconds later, every light was green and King was removing the cap and making sure Yasmin was OK. How did that feel? he asked cautiously. Fine, Yasmin replied, slightly out of it. How does it feel now? King continued. Uh, a little unusual. If I look straight ahead, I can see the crowd. If I look kind of into thin air in front of where my focus is... I can see white, Yasmin explained. That's excellent, King replied, almost sounding relieved, but as he did so, he seemed to look over at someone in the crowd, near Miss Sissons, and shake his head somberly. Sophie looked over again at Miss Sissons and saw her shake her head too. Take your place over there next to Mr Houghton. Yasmin walked towards him. He put his hand on her arm to help her balance, and there Yasmin stood, at that moment, the most famous girl in the world. Sophie was slightly frustrated. After the argument she had with her dad last night, she thought she deserved one. She was delighted for her friend, of course, the first child to be given an implant, but she was understandably a bit jealous as well. Katie was sat down on the bench, downhearted. "'What's wrong?' Sophie asked. "'They clearly need your parents to sign off on you having one. They aren't going to get my dad to give permission, are they?' Katie replied in a tone that was aggressive, but not aimed at Sophie. Sophie was about to reply when King started speaking again. It was time for the second lucky child to step forward. Reuben in year four, King announced. The whole school looked baffled. Reuben in year four, one of the year six boys scoffed. Who's Reuben in year four? No one had ever heard of a Reuben in year four. Pinkleton was small enough for everyone to know everyone else and no one knew who it was and children were looking around their group asking if anyone else had heard of such an imposter. No one came forward. Even Mrs Tabard, who had finished counting the dinner money and was now on the prowl for someone to run the healthy tuck shop at break time, shouted, Who? And she knew everyone. After looking round at all the children in school, Sophie noticed Mr Houghton with a huge grin on his face, standing on the stage. He was eagerly beckoning towards someone in the crowd. Come on, Reuben. Where are you? King asked. I think you might have the wrong name. We don't have a Reuben here, Ryan Myers shouted out, desperate to point out the mistake that had apparently been made. Sophie continued to watch Mr Houghton. He was still gesturing for someone only known to him to come up to the stage. Reuben? Reuben Houghton? King was beginning to get a bit agitated. Reuben Houghton? Sophie muttered to herself. She wasn't alone. Mr Houghton had often spoke about a son of his being his pride and joy, but had always said he was extremely happy at the school he was at in the next village. Sophie decided there could only be one reason that he would even think about moving him. Meanwhile, on stage, Mr Houghton was beginning to get quite agitated. He had blatantly enrolled his son at school so he could have him on the list for an implant and everyone watching was beginning to realise this as well. Had Yasmin not still been in a daze, she would be the first to express the lack of fairness. Eventually, a short, blonde, reddish-haired boy stood up from the middle of Year 4 line and turned to face his admiring crowd. 
Sophie looked at him and couldn't see a resemblance between Reuben and his dad. He waved aggressively and started to bow. Unbeknown to Reuben, the only people cheering were those that were oblivious to the fact that the boy had never been seen at school before, mostly the film crew and people beyond the fence that surrounded the school who weren't allowed in. At the same time, the teachers and other adults in and around the scene who knew were looking at Mr Houghton, who now had sweat patches on his shirt under his arms due to the threatening glares he was receiving from the knowing people in the crowd. Clapping slowed around the field as it became clear exactly what was going on. The camera operators and the other new people started to notice that none of the children or the parents were clapping, and so their applause had started to peter out. It was starting to sound more like one of those slow claps of annoyance and frustration. The head and his son had fiddled the system and the whole world was beginning to see it. Reuben continued his walk with huge pride. The sense of dread that Sophie guessed he had when his name was announced had clearly gone and the shock was obviously not affecting him at all. He was now waving vigorously to a crowd who really weren't waving back. No one responded and by now it was becoming a farce. That was until one lone voice shouted, Good luck Reuben, my sweet, you deserve it. The whole crowd turned to get a glimpse of who it was. Towards the back of the cameras and film crew stood a woman wearing sunglasses and a flowery dress, waving like a lunatic. Thanks, Mummy, Reuben shouted back, suddenly filled with even more confidence at the sight of his beloved mother. The adults around the school looked up at Mr Houghton again, this time with a look of contempt, but also a look of, we know what you've done. Reuben reached the centre stage. He walked straight over to the microphone stand where King was still stood and took the microphone out of King's hand. King looked at him in disbelief, then shot Mr Houghton a disgusted look. The look of embarrassment on Mr Houghton's face disappeared temporarily and he glared angrily back at King. Sophie swore she was the only one to see this. Whilst the two of them were exchanging evil glances, Reuben had started a speech. Whether it was pre-prepared or not was anybody's guess. If I could just say a few words before this amazing honour is bestowed upon me, Reuben began in an incredibly posh voice. Sophie thought he sounded like he should have been at one of those private boarding schools and Ryan Myers in particular was licking his lips at this new fresh meat that he could get his teeth into. Reuben continued, I am extremely humbled to be accepting this as one of Pinklegrim Primary's most loved students. At the side, Mr Houghton seemed to cough and say, <coughs> Pingleton, at the same time, spotting his son's problem with the unit of measure at the end of the village name and trying to help him save face, especially from Ryan, who was beginning to crack his knuckles in anticipation. Ryan was almost stood up at the end of the line stretching, limbering up for the inevitable beating later. I have not been here long. Yeah, about half an hour, said Mrs Tabard, not very quietly but I already feel like the school have accepted me and hopefully I can help us improve with my far superior intelligence and ability. I look forward to working with all of you as much as I'm sure you will enjoy working with me. Reuben bowed. There was one solitary clap from Reuben's mum in sunglasses towards the back. Everyone else sat there stone-faced. OK, right. Um, well, that was uh, unexpected, King said uncomfortably. King was seen by many as being uncomfortable a lot of the time, but this was just plain weird and awkward. After a few seconds for Reuben to get comfy and announce that he was ready, King gave the exact same spiel he'd gave to Yasmin a few minutes ago and placed a cap on Reuben's head. This time, there was no whooping or celebrating. It wasn't Reuben's fault his dad had abused his position and he had cheated his way to getting an implant. Although, it kind of was Reuben's fault that he'd been a real arrogant, egocentric buffoon on his way up to the stage. Also, the children, especially the likes of Katie, who knew she was going to miss out, couldn't help but feel angry. The rest of the process carried off exactly like it had done before with Yasmin. The lights flashed green and Reuben stood up slowly. His mum clapped ferociously and Mr Houghton patted him on the back. The expressions on the faces of the children were priceless. They had been cheated and they knew it. If Reuben was still going to be here tomorrow, he would certainly now be of interest to Ryan. These thoughts didn't linger long with the children, though, as King said, Lucky person number three, then. The children immediately forgot about the injustice they had just witnessed and began to murmur about who would be next. Every child in school again sat bolt upright with arms folded and legs crossed, hoping against all odds that it would be them. Silence fell and King temporarily played on the tension by looking around the crowd and dragging out the announcement as long as he could. Year six again, King started. Sophie Hardy.
The Sophie Hardy Saga was written and produced by Emma Dale and narrated and produced by Leona Hall. If you enjoyed it and would like to continue to follow the adventures of Sophie and her friends in coming episodes, then please subscribe through one of the many podcast providers out there. The links for each of these can be found on our website. If you require more information, visit our many social media channels or if you would like to purchase a hard copy of the book, then be sure to check out www.sophiehardysaga.com. Thank you for listening and we hope you enjoy.